going to be painting this piece and I don't know how it's gonna go because somebody spilled food on it. So hopefully that won't cause a resist and hopefully no one will even notice once the thing is painted. So I've got my daisy palette set up and I've got my paint out, so let's get started. We're gonna begin by mixing up a wash. I've already activated some colors that would work well for one. And it's supposed to be a bit of a rainy day and she's taking shelter underneath a leaf. So I'm gonna grab a nice indigo and a little bit of Payne's gray in there. And we're gonna use that as an all over wash. And then we're gonna sprinkle in some salt. So the mop brush I have is a little large for that. I'll just go ahead and use a Sumi brush. And I'm gonna work with sort of the natural streaky texture we're getting. And blend it out a little bit towards the bottom. Trying to work quick. And then I'm gonna dab up what I can from her face. All right, now we'll give this a chance to dry. All right, guys, this has had a chance to dry. I am going to go brush this salt off into the trash. So I've noticed that salt seems to react a lot better on cheaper paper, which is exactly what I'm using here. This is just Canson Foundations. I got like a ream of it off of Amazon for like 20 bucks. And this is what I use for a lot of my swatch tests and other sort of throwaway materials because it's economical, but apparently salt loves it. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up a nice leaf green. And before I get too far with that, I'm actually going to do a splatter technique, but I wanna do a cheap mask on her face since this paper doesn't lift up too well. So I've just got a mini sketchbook. I'm just gonna rip a page from it and roughly try to tear it to size. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, those rough edges are gonna help it look a little more natural. Then we're going to pick up some of that blue we mixed. You can see already why we masked that off. And it's fine if it gets elsewhere on her, I just don't want it getting directly on her face. It's gonna be kind of a loose little watercolor. All right. So I need to let that layer dry, but I am going to continue to mix the green and I'm gonna go ahead, lift that little mask. And I'm just using a hooker's green as the base. Now usually I would use Windsor Newton olive green gold if I'm doing leaves and grass because it is a beautiful color that goes from almost a chartreuse yellow to a nice rich green gold. But since this is a blue rainy day, we're just going to focus on some of our darker greens. All right, yeah. And I will let the splatter effect dry. But you know what? Since I've got you guys, we'll mix up her skin tone, which is just yellow ochre with a little bit of scarlet mixed in. Now you can mix in more scarlet if you're trying to offset the neutralizing effect of yellow ochre plus the blue we mixed. I am okay with that because this is supposed to be a little rainy day. So it's okay with me if her skin is a little muted. All right. So now to let that splatter effect dry. All right, so the splots have had a chance to dry. We're going to come in here and I think I like using that Sumi brush so much, I'm actually gonna grab a slightly smaller one. Go ahead and get it a little prepared. Grab some nice green paint. And we're probably going to have to go 
a lot darker with this, but this is a good first layer. Just doing a fun, relaxing little watercolor tutorial, kind of experimenting to see how all of this meshes together. Wanted to do something light and cute for my Kidlet portfolio. Okay, so I'm going to utilize a drag technique. I was hoping the lines would break up a little more because I really like how that looks. I'm going to fill in the leafy background a little bit better. And I'm getting a little bit of rippling because I'm using cheap paper. And that's fine. That's something I figured was gonna happen. So we'll soak up some of that. And then we're actually going to use a splatter technique. And then go up a little bit. And then we're going to use a spray bottle because we want kind of a misty look. Just really playing around today. Down here as well. Use my hand a bit as a guard. Over here. All right, and I think what would be fun would be if we grab some of that background blue and splattered it in so it'll diffuse a bit. Just really pulling all the fun tricks out of my book. Then we can use a thirsty brush to soak up a little bit of this excess water. We did put a lot on the page. Maybe even go directly into our hooker's green pan. Do some splatters with that as well. And I'm going to use my paper towels and dab up the transition between sky and leaves. Picking up a lot of that blue as well, which is kind of unfortunate but we could always attempt to do another layer after this one has had a chance to dry. That's the key when we're doing these sort of um, wild techniques, chaotic techniques, is if you want it to work, you have to give it time to dry in between. So we're going to step away and let that dry. All right, so our paper is still damp, but it is mostly dry. It's probably gonna end up being damp for a lot of the evening. So we are going to, what are we gonna do? I think we're going to reestablish some of the background maybe. So we're going to carefully Oh, this brush is a little wetter than I wanted because I wanted to have some nice starts and stops to it. So I'm gonna dry it out a bit on a paper towel. And then I'm going to sprinkle in some more salt. There we go. I moved some of it, sprinkle some up there because I wanted to darken that a bit just to sort of reinforce the technique we'd introduced earlier because it did sort of get lost and then I'm going to use the same brush and I'm going to fill in the background a bit with this darker blue help push the foreground and the background apart. And then 
sprinkle in a little just to add some texture. And then I need to be careful about not overworking, which I kind of fear is already happening in the background. So what I'm gonna do with that is I'm actually gonna grab a bunch of indigo, mix it in with the blue, and then I'll use it very gently at the top after all this is dried. All right, so this is mostly dry. I'm gonna use a really large Sumi brush and it's probably gonna dry brush, which is what I want it to do. And I'm gonna add a heavier layer of indigo here at the top. See how it's dry brushing out? That's fine. We want that and get it real heavy up there. This is a fairly inexpensive brush from Daiso of all places. All right, so we're gonna work kind of quick. We're gonna use a quill. Gonna brush some of it out, but not all of it. I'm gonna leave it kind of loose and chunky. And then, again with the salt, I know. And unfortunately, my brush shed a few hairs in there. So I'm gonna have to wait until everything is dry to retrieve them, but I'm pretty happy with how that looks. And I probably should leave the background alone for now. In fact, salt's not even really reacting. I may have oversaturated the paper. And I'm using kosher salt here because it's got a larger surface area. So it leaves a more snowflake-esque uh, footprint. All right, so uh, I can work on Kara though, down there at the bottom while that dries. Remember, we pre-mixed the skin tone. Grab that piece of salt. And this paper really doesn't have much of a capacity to carry watercolor. So using a thirsty brush, we're just going to absorb the excess. Try to keep it from pooling up too much. All right. Now to give that a chance to dry. All right, guys, so our sky area is still drawing, so that means we need to sort of avoid it. I'm just going to keep working on Kara. And I probably should go change my water out because it is pretty gross. Fairly dark blue right now. We're going to, since this is a fairly simple cartoony style, we're gonna keep our watercolor very simple to match. So we're gonna do a line across the face and fill in on top of that. Actually I'm gonna curve it a little bit more and then a line of shading underneath and then under her mouth. And this cheap paper really does, like, as soon as you start adding water, it really starts to buckle. And her little leggies and that foreground arm. And we haven't even done the grass yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and activate a couple of different browns and give that a chance to dry. All right, guys, so I think that uh, this area up here is just gonna take a really long time to dry. So something I opted to do is the skin tone mix I made is pretty muddy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remix it. And that way I'm not just making it mud. It's okay right now, but I think as layers go by, it'll just sort of intensify in muddiness, which is not something I want, not something I want to happen. And now zoom in so you guys can see a little better. I have to move the camera a bit. There we go. Um, just 
going to do sort of like the direct shadow and this might dry so light we can't even see it. So I may have to go over this again. You can probably see it now, but you guys know how it is with watercolors. They always dry lighter than they went down, which is the same, which is a shame because often it's like, oh, that would have been perfect. So close, but not quite. So I'll even go ahead. Yeah, it's gonna be like non-existent. I'm gonna go ahead and mix it a little bit darker and then give it time to dry. All right, so that has had time to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and do probably, um, I don't know, probably not the last layer because I'm just not able to get the contrast that I really want for this. And I don't wanna overdo it because it's going to end up looking just like too fussy. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to step away for the evening because it's pretty late and come back tomorrow when my paint has had a chance to evaporate. And that's going to cause the colors and the saturation to intensify a bit and it should give me the effect that I'm looking for. But before I go, I am going to go ahead and start the dirt underneath her. since I didn't do anything on her hands. I'll zoom out a little bit so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So we've got kind of a gesture of dirt and I'm gonna soak up this excess here. And then I'm gonna go in with a more saturated mix on my brush. Just pick it up directly from the half pans and working wet into wet, which means I do have to work kind of quickly on cheap paper like this. I'm just going to brush it in. All right. And give that a chance to dry because it is pretty saturated. Something else I want to do while we're here is pick up some of that hooker's green. And start tightening up some of the leaves, not all of them. I want the background leaves to sort of recede. And I'm working directly from the palette here. Just gonna dab up some of that ex excess since it has a tendency to pool on the paper. And give that a chance to dry. So it is the next morning. This has had some time to dry. I'm going to go in now with that darker um, evaporated skin tone. And that should be enough contrast. Then I'm going to reactivate my earth tones again. And I need to go get a fresh, clean glass of water to start the day off right. So now that we've got a clean mug of color, or rather a clean mug of water, clean cup of water, I'm gonna go ahead and activate the colors I wanna use for her hair. And since I haven't really done Kara in this style in color yet, um, I get to figure that out on air, which is always exciting. While those colors activate, I'm gonna go on ahead. I think I'm going to start with Venetian red. Go ahead and mix that in. It's a somewhat opaque color, just by nature of the pigment. 
didn't really mix it dark enough yet, but I'll just go ahead and put down a base coat. And give that a chance to dry. All right, so that has had plenty of time to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and do another layer, especially because this layer didn't really show up too well. So I'm gonna work almost directly with the color. And while this cheap paper has its place, I don't know that even a light watercolor illustration like this is one of them because it really can't take a whole lot of work. All right, so the indigo color I'd mixed last night has evaporated a bit. I'm gonna speckle it on in there. Try to give sort of a rainy impression. Hopefully it'll be dark enough. All right, let that dry as well. And since that layer is mostly dry, I'm actually going to go in now with that same indigo color and I'm going to add some shadow to some of these leaves. Mostly I'm just playing around, trying to figure out a new style, see if it works for me. And while that dries, I could start on her shirt. Maybe something bright and happy. So maybe a gamboge yellow. And then we'll get started on her boots, grabbing a burnt sienna. All right, give that a chance to dry as well. All right, so this has mostly dried. We're gonna go back into that gamboge yellow. Whoa. So one of the nice things about gamboge yellow is they're really shades. So you get a lot of tonal variation out of just one color. To me, those are the funnest colors to use. Went outside the lines a little, so I'm gonna take a little bit of folded up paper towel, clean that up just a little bit. Absorb some of that excess liquid. And we'll go back into her hair with the Venetian red. It's kind of a poor brush for this. It wants to go where it wants to go. Have you guys ever, have you noticed that your synthetic brushes always end up with like um, a snubbed nose? So like, the very tip ends up folded in on itself. And I know you can use boiling water sometimes to reset bristles. And you gotta be really careful because it can dissolve the ink. I mean, the sorry, the glue that's used to hold the bristles into the ferrule. But you got a ruined brush anyway. Sometimes it's just worth it just to try and salvage it. And I've used that with some like severely bent larger synthetics. This is one that could probably benefit from me attempting to reset it because otherwise it's just kind of, so you don't want to keep brushes that are ruined in your regular rotation because you'll grab them by accident and then wonder why you're having a hard time managing the lines. And with brushes that are slightly ruined, you can't let them do the work for you. So it's almost worthwhile just to either fix it or replace it. We've got enough of them out of a snub nose that it's probably time to fix it. Fix a bunch of them. Although I would only, I wouldn't really recommend it with nicer brushes. And I really wouldn't recommend it with um, natural hair brushes. There are other ways you can fix natural hair brushes. And I've actually covered those at natosoup.blogspot.com. All right, let that dry. Okay, so that's had a chance to dry. Now we're gonna do her shorts. And I'm also, so 
when I'm painting these things, sometimes they take a really long time to work on. And that means I'm reactivating paints as I go. So that's just something to keep in mind. If your paints dry out, there's nothing wrong with adding a little more water to them. And I never made blush for her cheeks. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That's a little bit of scarlet. I'm gonna tend towards the, uh, like the, the cooler reds for this since this is kind of a cool. And we'll just do cute little circles, I guess. And on the knees too. And on the palm of the hand. And why not on the inside of the ear? There we go. And we're gonna need to think about a color for her shorts. I sort of wanna go brown, but we have a lot of brown down there. So maybe an orange or even a red orange would be a good choice. All right, so this has had a chance to dry. I think we talked about doing her shorts in orange. That's had plenty of time to soak in and activate. Then I'll use a darker brown to do another layer on her hair. Mostly focusing on where the cast shadow would be. And then I'll try to lightly do some freckles. Although if they end up too dark, we can always use a bit of paper towel. Dab them up. Although now that's like a little bit too light, huh? Maybe add some back and get two layer freckles. Give that a chance to dry as well. Right, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of scarlet red and use that to add a little bit of implied shadow on her shorts. And, whoop, that's way too much. I was going to grab a little bit of Van Dyke Brown for her eyes. Let me absorb that excess. And I'll go give that an opportunity to dry as well. All right, guys. So that's just a <clears throat> gosh, that's just about dry. So I've got some white gouache here, and I want to do a couple things. I want to add. Oh, why are you so dirty? Add some water to it. Ideally, clean water. And we're gonna actually a little too dry. See if we can get it to, there we go, splatter a little bit better. All right. And then we're just going to do some highlights just here and there, just to sort of help forms pop out a little bit better. And you guys can probably see how much this paper has buckled. If not, it's buckled a fair bit. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to put it in between some sketchbook pages and hopefully that will help it smooth out. Little highlights on the eye. And on the hair. And I think we are just about done. So I wanna thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. A lot of these techniques can be used if you're like a stamper. A lot of these techniques can be used um, as long as you're using a pigment-based ink with your stamps. Um, and a lot of these techniques can be used if you buy digi stamps and you wanna print that out on a thinner watercolor paper. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you again really soon and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.